whether it is hell or heaven will also depend upon the fund of karmas that we have brought with us and i often say even as you come out of the womb of your mother you hold the blueprint of your life entire life from moment to moment to moment and i often would say that is whatever i say it is from the the crumbs from the master's table and from my experience so it is either what he spoke to me what he instructed or from my own experience nothing is outside that so when he said hell or heaven be with me is our first motto to remember and then bhagwan said you cannot if you cannot attain that great state of nirvana then the next best thing is to do seva to the one who is in that state so i'm going to talk about the purpose and meaning of our life and how to bring god into our daily life because no matter what philosophy it is what we learn from these great people unless you translate them into your daily life there is no meaning and this life given to us this body and uh, the place we we have been placed and the situations that we have come across the people we meet with our reactions to people and situation the whole bundle is as per the will of god as per the blueprint you have been born with from moment to moment bhagwan kept saying all the time that every detail of everybody's life every creature's life not only ours even the other beings starting from the the worm the ant the mosquito the birds the animals and all those natural elements it's all preordained predetermined and that is why even as you are born from the womb of your mother you carry the blueprint and everything happens as per the will of god so i would like to remind you of the saying of ramana bhagwan which is very important to all of us which is what was also uh, said by our bhagwan all the time what is that whatever is meant to happen will happen no matter what 
whatever is not meant to happen will not happen no matter what. So the best course of action is to keep silent. <laughs> and what does it mean to be able to say yes to everything that life brings to you, be it a joy or sorrow, learning to say sorry, yes, okay. This too is a gift of God, a gift of love, a gift of grace from God. And surrendering, or at least trying to surrender, what we call acceptance, which will be very reluctant in the beginning. Reluctant acceptance, which will slowly and gradually turn into surrender. Accepting everything that happens in life as a gift from God and it is the best that can happen to us at that moment because it's being arranged by God. For what? For the purpose of your life. And what is the purpose? Yogi Ram Suratkama said, Nirvana is the purpose of life, but then Nirvana may not be easily accessible. So he said, remembrance of God from moment to moment, if possible. Remembrance of God is the only purpose of life. Whether you are from Alaska or Argentina or Australia or Japan, any quarter of any part of the world, this body is given to you. And God has put life in it. The in-breath, out-breath, in-breath, out-breath is rooted in Him. The Divine Presence is within all the creatures of the creation. And your very breath is rooted in that. And He has given you this body and the life pertaining to this body, only to remember Him. That is the purpose of life. So now let's be very clear that the purpose of life is only God. It's not becoming President of America or getting a Nobel Prize or anything else. Becoming a CEO of a huge multinational company. If you can remember God as much as you can in your daily life, in the course of your daily life, that would be the best living possible. In fact, Bhagwan said it in very strong words. He said, it's only when you remember God, you truly live. The times you forget God, you are dead. You carry your own dead body, even though the body is still breathing. Why? Because the body is not serving the purpose of life. And what is the purpose of life? Remembering God. So the times you forget God, you are carrying your own dead body. When even the breath stops, four people are needed to carry your body. <laughs> it becomes so heavy. But right now, it's so light. We are able to carry ourselves around. Unless, of course, you are too much of a weight for yourself. But. So this is it. You know how strongly put? He also said, remembering God is dharma, forgetting God is adharma. It's only when you forget God, we start to indulge in adharmic activities. So you see such strong statements have come from the great ones for us to remember all through life and act upon it at least to the extent possible. So now the purpose is clear, how to remember God. And all through life, we are all very busy with our life, busy earning money, busy living our life with relations, with friends, with whatsoever, whosoever we come across. So as we get busy with life, there are so many responsibilities and so much struggle. Amidst all the struggle and busyness 
of life, how to remember God. So Bhagwan said, Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar said, these great ones, they have lived their teachings. They were not speaking lines from a book. It is their own truth. We come to hear about Nirvana, yes. But is it our truth? No. It is the truth of Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar, it's the truth of Papa Ram Das, it's the truth of Ram Krishna Param Saramana Bhagwan. It has not yet become our truth. But we have faith in these great masters, in their great wisdom, and we, have, we are trying to act upon it. So, how to translate the teachings of our great masters into our daily life amidst all the noises around the busynesses of life? Those are the easiest, and of course the highest, and the fastest route to this is Nama chanting. This was, this has been prescribed right from the times of the time immemorial. Bhagavatam talks about the chanting of the name of Krishna, Ramayana, and all that followed, the Rama Mantra. Now in Kali Yuga, this is the dark age. So much violence all around. Sinning simply happens all the time. It's so easy to sin because there is no check in life. And it's getting worse as generation after generation because the parents have no control over the children. And how will the children be of these children in turn? Just think for a moment, there's absolutely no control. So, what do we do about it? How to go about it? So this must be our main thinking. That is, to bring God into your daily life. Not only that, to pass it on to your next generation. Prepare them for the challenges of life with sharing your responsibilities with the children, not indulging them, but telling them how hard you are working, how much responsibility is involved in the family, and letting them know that they are part of this responsibility. And how do we go about it with the strength of God? <laughs> 